Hello everyone, this is Hal and in this lecture we will talk about MapReduce, which is a leading storage and programming model for mining massive data sets. Traditionally, when we do machine learning or statistics or classical data mining tasks in a single machine, we'll usually store the data on the local disk and we will load the data from the local disk to the main memory and we will use CPU or GPU to do the computation. Now, what if you have a really massive data set that can't even be stored in a single disk? For example, Google wants to store 20 plus billion web pages and each web page, let's say it's about 20 kilobytes and that adds up to about 400 terabytes. And let's further say, that one computer reads about 30 to 35 megabytes per second from the disk. It will take about four months to even read, to even read the whole web. And plus you need about 1000 hard drives to store this data. It takes even more time to do something useful with the data. So today to handle this kind of problem, the standard architecture is emerging and it's called a data center. And usually a data center is consists of a cluster of commodity Linux nodes and commodity network to connect them. Typically, we will use a stack of commodity Linux nodes in a, in a rack. Basically, we will have 16 to 64 nodes and stack in a single rack and we'll have a switch that's usually a one gigabit per second switch to connect all the machines in a single rack so that they can be connected to each other and obviously this is not enough for example in 2016 it's estimated that google had about 2.5 million machines so Apparently, you will need multiple racks, and to connect all these racks, you will need a backbone switch, and this backbone switch is usually of higher throughput. Uh, let's say that's about 2 to 10 gigabits per second. And this is what the data center looks like. Now, to enable storing and accessing massive data, we can map multiple nodes using a hierarchy of switches. Are we done? Unfortunately not. Large scale computing for data mining problems of commodity hardware comes, a lot, comes with a lot of challenges. For example, how do you distribute computation into multiple nodes? And further, how can we make it easy to write distributed programs? And another problem is that machines may fail. For example, one server may stay up to three years. That's about 1,000 days. And it will fail mostly due to this breakdown. If it's just one server, that may be OK. But if you have 1,000 servers, then you expect then you're expected to lose one machine per day, which is not very acceptable. And people estimated that Google has about 2.5 million machines in 2016 so you can imagine that there will be about 2500 machines failing every day this is going to be a disaster if you are, you don't deal with it so how do we handle these problems if machines may fail of course one idea is to store the files in multiple times for reliability and if copying data over a network takes time then Apparently, one idea would be to bring the computation closer to the data. For example, we can, like we said, we can do the computation locally on a server and just transport the results of the computation. So basically, we need a simple and elegant way to address all these problems at once. And the answer is MapReduce. This is also Google's computational and data manipulation model. And the MapReduce consists of two components. The first component is storage infrastructure or file system. And in Google, this is called Google File System or GFS. And there is a open source version of it, which is called Hadoop 
file system or HDFS. And the second component is a programming model. For the first component, storage infrastructure, the problem of course is if, if nodes fail, how do you store the data persistently? And here by persistent, we mean that if you store data in the nodes and if some nodes fail, you're still able to fetch the data somewhere else. And the answer of course is distributed file system. And again, examples include Google file system and Hadoop file system. Now, before getting into the details, let, let's take a look at one typical usage pattern of distributed file system. Let's say that you have very huge files and each file is about in the hundreds of gigabytes to terabytes. And this data is rarely updated in place. For example, Google usually um, batch some web page and store them, but they, but they rarely um, update the web page in place. The same thing happened with Amazon. They usually have some product pages and they append the product page into some existing large file, but they rarely modify these product pages uh, in place. So you have a lot of reads operation and you have a lot of append operation, but update operation is uh, relatively rare. So based on this usage pattern, people usually would store the file in chunk servers. How do they do this? Usually one large file is split into contiguous chunks. And typically each chunk is about 16 to 64 megabytes. And each chunk is of course replicated usually twice or three times to improve reliability um, so that you can quote and unquote store the data persistently. And usually you will also try to keep replicas in different racks. The reason for this is that if usually switch may fail and if one switch fail, the entire rack of nodes may fail and become inaccessible. So you don't want to put all the eggs in the same basket. More concretely, for example, if I have a file C and um, you will split this file into multiple chunks. Let's say chunk, uh, let's say these are C0, C1, C2, et etc. et cetera. And we will store the first chunk C0 into multiple chunk servers. And we do similar stuff in for the other chunks. And if uh, we have another file D, we will do similar things. And note that we will bring computation directly to the data. That means the trunk servers also serve as compute servers. So the computation will mostly be done locally and they only communicate or transmit the results of computation. And for, again, another for, another for the trunk servers to communicate with each other, you will need a master node. And this is also called a NAND node in the Hadoop file system, HDFS. And this master node, it will store the metadata about where files are stored. For example, where the first or second chunk of file C are stored and where is the, the third chunk of file D. And these master nodes might be replicated to avoid single point failure. And of course, in order to access the data, access the file, you will also need a client library and the client library will talk to the master node to find the trunk servers. But as long as you get the addresses of the of different files, you can connect directly to the trunk servers to access the data. So the file of data access is actually happening in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. 